Good evening, shoppers, and welcome to... Wait. Wrong place. What were we doing? Right, right. Uh, we're going to look at our dummy program right here in Ida. Uh, like I said, we would. I just got off work, been awake for a really long time, but uh, yeah. We're just going to jump right into it. So when you load up our dummy EXE in Ida, you will be presented with something like this. It's a little easier to look at than Ollie. Uh, a lot of people see Ollie and it's just lines and lines and it's overwhelming. They don't know what to do. Uh, so this breaks it down pretty easy. So it, it calls this start. So, all right, we, we look at this as set app type, and then we see call sub. All right, let's press enter on that and see what this sub does. Well, it does some stuff. Looks like initialization, callbacks, unhandled exception, exit code, get arguments, set some modes, comes on down, environment stuff. We see C exit. We see a call to a sub. Hey. We remember that from Ollie. Let's hit enter on it. And bang. There is our set console title dummy. There is our uh, looks like from here to here. Well, a little bit further down. Can't see. There you go. Is registering our class. And if we remember how many arguments that that thing had, it was quite a lot. Now, if you know how the dev c++ compiler works you would know that it allocates space on the stack and then actually moves the variables to each spot of the stack here so we we look and we see argument one zero okay argument two dummy message queue that's the name argument three hey we remember that argument three is the address to our window procedure so Let's keep that in mind. The rest of it's really not important. We come down, we see register class. If it fails, well, come on down here and return. If it doesn't fail, come on over here and create a window with name dummy and with our uh, window class that we just made. Sorry about that. I accidentally repositioned a little bit, so you saw a jump, but all it did was move from about here to about here. Uh, anyways, uh, coming on down, we see that it goes into a loop, and we see it's doing find window, and if it don't find it, then uh, we're going to come on over here. We're going to move this weird number. You press H on it, and it's a 500. Look at that. We're going to move 500 to the top of the stack, which is the same as saying push 500, and then we're going to call sleep. And then we're going to go right back up to the top. So until it finds the window, it's just going to keep sleeping. When it finds it, it's going to jump on over here. Very easy to follow. you got these nice little arrows and everything. Now, they can get a little confusing because you'd think we didn't find it bad. Red's bad in, everyone, in everyone's book. Red is bad. Green is good. Red is stop. Green is go. But this is saying test EAX. And then it's saying jump if equal. So we're checking to see if it's zero. Jump if it is zero. J Jz is jump zero. Je is the same, almost the same thing. Depends on the uh, test or compare above it. So we're saying if it is zero, jump. So this actually returns true and brings us over here. And when it returns false, that means that this find window resulted in a one not a zero and then we follow the red path so once we uh, land over here we see uh, I'm some dummy program call my functions and uh, output to the screen and then we see okay cool we see a couple different uh, we see a loop with a couple different ways to restart it all right so we see a peak message okay so we're gonna go into a message loop Again, we see that jump if zero. So we see, okay, is there a message? If it's zero, come on over here. You're right. If it's zero, so if it, this returns true, follow the green one. 
See, it can get a little confusing with that color. Um, but it, if you just have to know the test and the jump of zero. So we come on down over here. If it, if it is zero, we compare some global variable with one. And if it's not one, see, this is where it can get confusing. So if it is zero, which compare D word with one, will return zero when they are the same. So this is where you want to look at JZ as JE, so jump if equal. So if it is equal to one, move on down over here. If it's not, come over here, pause, and then return after the pause finishes. So if it is one, we're going to come over here. And so we see that we can get here either by having a message or by that uh, global variable being equal to one. Okay, let's remember that. And then we do translate, dispatch, sleep for a little bit. We compare EBX with, well, let's hit H on it, 2000. Okay, so we see that we're sleeping for five milliseconds. And that, you know, five by 2000 is gonna be roughly five, uh, well, 10 seconds. And this label here is saying EDX is DW milliseconds, which I'm not sure I agree with that because, well, where did EDX come from? And we finally bring ourselves way up here and we see, you know, an EDX up there, but other than that, you don't see it. And the reason being is that something probably dispatch, dispatch message returns the EDX uh, value, uh, you know, some sort of thing. We, we could dig into that, but we're just not going to. But the sleep here, we're moving a five on the top stack calling sleep, so it's for five milliseconds. If it's done that 2,000 times, roughly 10 seconds, jump on down over here to I'm waiting, so output I'm waiting, and then restart the loop. This thick line goes to the top of the loop. If it's not, increment EBX, which we compare against 2,000, and jump back up there. So we can derive from this that this global variable is probably something called running. And if running is one, this will always loop. Or as long as we are receiving messages. So where are these messages being uh, translated, we'll call it, at that, register, that uh, window procedure. Now, if we come back up to our register, right here is where that window procedure is going to be. Click it and hit enter. Well, before that, hit escape to go back. We're going to hit N, and we're going to name this Window Procedure. Now, that's the cool thing about IDA. You can rename things whatever you want, pretty much. You can rename a register if you want to. We might even do that. Anyways, we're going to hit Enter, and we're going to come into that uh, loop here. Or not the loop, but that Window Procedure. And we know that a message loop has a HWIND, uh, oh, a window handle, a message, a WPRAM, and an LPRAM. Now, if we look at our arguments, we've got four arguments, 0, 4, 8, and C. So we can reasonably say that arg0 is HWIND. We can also say that arg4 is message. We could even go as far to say that this is WPRAM. Whoop, don't know what happened there and that this is L param. Don't know why that R got on there. So now if we wanted to, we could rename EBX to message, but that could get a little weird. So we'll just remember as we see message here is being stored in EBX, our handle is an EBP, W param and EDI. You know, for the sake of it, why not? Let's rename them. So we'll name EBP, um, we'll just do handle, we'll do in the comment window handle. 
So up here it does a little note, handle equals EBP, and that's a window handle. So anywhere we see handle, we know that that's our, our window handle. Now we can't call it HMIN because we already use that and it would be conflicting. But for message here, we can do MSG, not monosodium glutamate, although that stuff's delicious, it'll give you migraines. Bad for you, no MSG. Anyways, this is our message. Got a little note there. Now this could confuse things later, but we know what we're doing, right? Eh, whatever. EDI, we'll call this our W param, which we can't because we've already taken it. We could call it W param R, but that's not very um, descriptive. So let's call it something like ARG1. And then we'll, in the comment, do W param. And then ESI, we'll call this ARG2. And that's L param. So we know where it came from, how it actually got there. So that's going to make things a lot easier because now we see compare message to 1122H. Jump if not zero over here. Okay, so which means jump if equal, come over here. So if it is 1122, come over here. But if it's not equal, then come on over here. And we run into JA short. And that says jump if above. So if it's if message is greater than 1122, come on over here. If it's not, go over here. So let's start with if it is greater, it's going to say compare message with 1133. Jump if equal down here, if not over here. So if it's not, compare it with 1144. If it's not equal, jump so if it's not 1144 it's going to jump the f the green line and come down here it's going to clean up and jump back uh, and return the 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 uh window procedure it's going to clean up the window procedure and it's going to wait for the next message now if it is uh, so if this jump fails which means that this is 1144 why they didn't use a JE here in the compiler, who knows? Maybe this is a little bit more efficient. So it's going to come on down here and it's going to say arg2 gets set to this variable. Offset for running hmm, gets set to this variable. We're going to call this function. Well, let's hit enter on it and see what it does. Well, we see that we take arg an argument, another argument, we move into the address of EBX, EAX. And then we output EAX, which is our new value that we just stored in the address of that first argument or variable. So if we hit escape and go back, we see that our first argument is arg2, which we remember is our L param. And we can see that by hovering over it. We see arg2 equals ESI colon gives us the note L param. And then we see running is being sent as the second argument. So we come back in here, we see our first argument. Now these are going to be backwards, remember. So first in, last out. So our first argument is going to become our second one, which this is going to hold running, and we can actually rename this to running. And arg4 is going to be our L param, or our arg2. So then we can see that we are going to be moving, running into EBX, L param into EAX. We're going to move the value of EAX into the address that stores running. So we actually passed not running, but we passed an address to running like that. So we modified the what was at the address of a variable with a new value. We modified a value via pointer. 
So that could be kind of useful. We can change stuff by sending a variable address and an LPRAM, and it'll even tell us a new value and print to the screen. Then it returns. Let's hit escape. Okay, now you see it, it uh, returns the EAX, which is going to be our LPRAM, again, R2, and it says, I exit the program by modifying an int. Okay, cool. So then it cleans up. All right, now what if it was 1133? It wouldn't go down and compare here. It'd say, okay, I output strings. Move uh, offset, I output strings into var2c and call this function. So this function takes in one argument, moves it to EAX, and then moves EAX to the top of the stack, and then calls uh, printf. So basically it's just a user printf with no, it only outputs strings. Might not be too useful, but hey, we could use it. I mean, we could just use printf, but we could use that. So let's hit escape. So we've got that branch all done. So let's actually control, 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 control. I'm um, control clicking, holding control and clicking the title of all these. Now I'm trying to drag it, but I can't. So I think you hold shift. Yeah, there you go. Hold control and shift. And we, we've looked at all of these already. And let's right click this one while holding control and do group oops do group nodes and do looked at and it's going to group them all up <coughs> just like that so we don't even have to look at them anymore I think I might have grabbed one that I didn't want to grab well that's okay we'll just right click it and ungroup nodes very simple well, really, I didn't grab anything, so can we simply do group nodes? No, we have to reselect them. But that's okay. So now, if it was not greater than 1122, it jumps over here and says, compare it with 1111. Now, if it is not the same, follow the green path, do the cleanup, and go back. If it is the same, go over here, do some math, which this looks like an inline function to me, and then it's going to say math. So an inline function really isn't going to be too useful for us because when we call it, there's no way to prevent the rest of the code. Uh, well, let's look up here. So what happened uh, to our first one? What if it is 1122? Okay, then we're going to jump over here and call this function. It says, I do something with no arguments and return a string. You can't see it. It's off camera, but it says a string. Um, Oh, I could probably do this. There you go. And then, so it outputs that with puts, and then it returns, I'm um, okay. Well, all right. So what happened to the function that made this? It's hiding. The compiler optimized it and did an inline function, which is okay. We might use that, but let's let's look at it for a second. Arg2, we remember, is our LPRAM. Okay, so it's adding LPRAM plus 7, LPRAM plus 4, LPRAM plus 2, and then it's doing some math. It's multiplying them all together. At first, it does EAX and EDX, so these two, and then ECX and EAX, which is the product of the two original ones. So it's multiplying them all together. And then it's moving into EDX, this wonky number. And then, well, if we hit H on it, you see this really weird number. 
it moves into EAX, ECX, which was our product of all three of them, it does a multiplication of EDX. So now EA, EAX is getting multiplied by this huge number. And then it's shifting the arithmetic right 31 times. So this is another compiler optimization. Uh, if you break this down and actually look at what it's doing, or you can even do it mathematically, you'd see that it is, of course, like I said, an ollie. Um, when we looked at this, it's dividing by three. So this is adding up three weighted numbers and finding some sort of weird average, and then it just returns we math. Probably not very useful. So yeah, once you do all that, this says, you know, take the decimal and shift it like a bunch. <laughs> Uh, because it's easier for a processor to do multiplication and then move a decimal point than it is for it to actually do a division. It's faster. And so when you compile it with optimization flags, it'll do things like inline simple functions and then really screw them up. Now you look at this whole picture here, if we zoom out, you see that we've got sort of this branch, 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 branch that goes to this plane and they all go back to one cleanup. Now this is a cascaded if statement, so it's if, 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 if. Well, the original code, code was probably a switch statement on message, but the compiler again optimized it out. But as you can see, we were able to label things, and now we have a very decent understanding of what each thing does and how exactly it works. We saw that it modifies running and that causes the program to exit you know there's a lot of other tricks with Ida and if you spend a lot of money you can get the uh, decompiler and you could actually hit F5 and it would error and then you go to options and then go to compiler and set this to a 4 and then you'd hit F5 and it would just give you some code um, <clears throat> but yeah I'm actually borrowing this from a uh, friend of mine who um, happens to have a legit copy of this um, when <laughs> when you're in the reverse engineering world I would not condone pirating reverse engineering tools it's just not wise and you see that it actually says oh it's a winter procedure and you go oh look yeah and then you see that cascaded if very clearly So yeah, I'm, I actually had to, he had a single license and so I actually have to use one of his computers and this whole setup to make it look like my computer. But <coughs> yeah, so I won't be using the decompiler because, well, I can't afford it. It's like the cheapest one is like two grand or something like that, uh, unless they want to give me a copy. Uh, I mean, I'm always showing this thing off uh, or I probably would more often if I had it but yeah anyways uh, so but this graph view very helpful um, and there's a lot of views there's sub views for functions for uh, function calls this will show you all the functions that c get called within the program so we see that there's only a few functions that ever get called printf and three functions and it will take us right to them where they were called it's very very handy um, there's yeah you know, the imports and we'll get into more of this but uh, yeah there's a lot to cover in Ida it's very in-depth it can be very helpful and it's a lot safer because it doesn't actually run your the executable that you're disassembling now this video is almost 25 minutes long I know it's kind of long but there is just way too much ground to cover with Ida uh, it's a very helpful tool um, and yeah, uh, as always, thank you for watching. Please rate, subscribe, comment, pass along to your friends. Um, I think I'm going to go to sleep.